I am Yahweh. That is my name. I will not give my glory to another. Or my praise to graven images. Lesson for today will be coming from Deuteronomy, the 6th chapter, and the 4th verse, and Mark, the 12th chapter, the 29th verse. One of the scribes, when he saw the way the Messiah was answering his parishioners to the degree of satisfaction, he too wanted to pose a question, and that was this, which of the commandments is first of all the commandments? And Yeshua's response was a direct quote from Deuteronomy 6 chapter and the 4th verse, which, as we know, the Old Covenant was written in Hebrew. So it would be Shema Israel Yahweh Elohim Yahweh Echad. Now we know that the New Covenant was written in Greek, and that would have went something as such. Akub, Israel, Kyrios, Arthios, Heman, Kyrios, back again, Heis SD. Now, because the Romans, who were the emperors that governed the provinces during the time our Messiah reigned, they spoke Latin. So in Latin, it would be Adi Israel Dominus Dias, Nostra Dias, Unos Est. So now we speak English. Now, notice this we speak modern English. English is not just modern, but Old English, which we don't speak, Middle English, which we don't speak, but we speak modern English, which they didn't speak either at that time. But in order for you to understand it, what the Messiah said was, Hear, O Israel, Yahweh, our God, Yahweh, is one. Now look at the Shema. And the Shema in Hebrew is the basis of all Jewish theology, which focuses on the oneness of Yahweh. I want to take a moment right now to look at what Rabbi Pinchas Winston had to say about the Shema, which you can read it for yourself while it's on the screen. Basically what he's saying is one day the whole universe will understand Yahweh's oneness and Yahweh alone will be exalted and Yahweh will rid the world of all impurity. Isn't that what we want? Indeed, that's the oneness of Yahweh. Now we see here when we say Shema, Shema in Hebrew means hear and obey. Similarly to the New Covenant, when we say James 1.22, do not just be hearers of the word, but what? But doers also. So Shema, hear and obey. Shema, and then in Greek, Akuub, hear and consider the matter. Don't just hear it, but consider it. And then in Latin, we have audi as an audible. Hear not just with your physical ears, but he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto you. Hear Israel, Yahweh. Now remember we talked about Yahweh loving his name being memorialized. But let's look at something. In Greek we have Kyrios. Kyrios means Lord. Not just divine Lord, but also Lord that are mortals on earth. Haven't you heard of Lord Chancellor, Lord Wilson? Well, we see here, Lord is imposed, which is a title. Also notice here in Latin, dominus, as in a king domin dominating over subjects. Well, indeed, Yahweh is definitely Lord, and he definitely has dominion over all the earth. Now, what is it that the Shema is saying here and obey Israel? Yahweh what? Elohim. Elohim means God. Now, I want you to notice something about Elohim. The first Hebrew alphabet that it starts with is Aleph, where we get the Greek alphabet, Alpha, and where we get our alphabet, Alphabet. Now, Aleph here is the first Hebrew alphabet, but notice the twelfth Hebrew alphabet is Lamed. And I do want to mention something. You know the little pocket New Covenant that I had earlier? Do you know you can find all of the Hebrew alphabets in Psalms 119? So you can turn there if you would like to just look at it if you would like to see that. Lamed, which is the 12th Hebrew letter of the alphabet, do you know that it means learn? Hear, O Israel, Yahweh, your Elohim, your God, wants you 
to learn something. Does not Yahweh tell us in Hosea 4 and 6 that my people perish for lack of what? Lack of learning, lack of knowledge. We have more information now today, but yet people still know so little. Here, O Israel, Yahweh your God wants you to learn and understand that he is one. What is this oneness that Yahweh wants us to understand about him? I want you to look at the word echad, which means in Hebrew, one. Look again at the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph. Now, Aleph alone in the Hebrew alphabet, the next Hebrew alphabet beside Aleph is Bek, like in Bethlehem. Aleph and Bek spells Ab, as in like abdomen. Now, if you put Aleph and Bek together for Ab, now put B-A with it, Abba. Hear and understand that Abba means Father. Yahweh wants to be your father. He's all of our fathers by creation from Genesis 1 26. For Yahweh said, let us make man in our image. Yes, he's your father by creation, but he wants to be your Abba, your father by relation. He wants that one relationship with just you. If it was just you on the earth by yourself, Yahweh wants that relationship with you. He wants to be your Abba, your father. Now, I want you to notice something else about the word Echad. Beside Aleph is Kai, which is the eighth Hebrew letter of the alphabet, which means life. Yahweh, your father, wants to give you life. Right now, you may be sitting there and there's some things that may just be dead and all around you. Yahweh wants to give you life. He wants to enliven you. Indeed, he does. And now we know the Holy Spirit is ministering to you even as we're speaking about this life. Now, Aleph and Kai together, you know what it means? I'm, I'm, I'm going to hide my hand from the delet. Aleph and Kai means Ak, brother. Not only does Yahweh want us to have a relationship with him as our father, but he also wants us to have a relationship with you, our sisters, and our brother. Because think about it. I can't have a relationship with God, and I don't want to have nothing to do with you. You are my sister. You are my brother. Not just by creation, but we want a relationship with each other. Now, I want you to note something about Kai. Kai is shaped like a lintel over a door. Remember what Yahweh said in Exodus 12 and 13. When he was talking to the children of Israel, he said, I want you to take the blood of the lamb and apply it to the two sides of the post and put it at the top of the lintel. And when I see the blood, I'm going to pass over you. Remember we talked about memorializing things earlier? Well, Passover, isn't that something we memorialize? Each spring, don't we have Passover and celebrate the fact that that blood that Yahweh saw that night allowed him to pass over us death that came to the Egyptians, the destruction that came to the, to the Egyptians. Yahweh passed that over. So Yahweh showing us with his oneness, when we hear and obey him, a lot of things can pass over us because we're in that right relationship with him to get that inheritance from him. Now, I want you to note something in the fourth Hebrew letter of the alphabet, which is Dalet. Dalet means witness at the door. And right now, and I want to mention something too about Dalet. In the Torah, Dalet has, let me get my pen, please. Will someone please hand me my pen? In the Torah, Dalet has what is called extended ears. Now, when Dalet's ears are extended, what is denoting is that when someone knocks at the door, you are listening. And right now, you are listening because he's knocking at the door of your heart. Thank you so much. The ears are extended in this fashion. And when somebody knocks at your door, don't you do like this? Yes? Who is it? Come in. Where's well, the same right now? The Messiah is knocking at the door of your heart. And he's telling you to open that door in Revelations 3 and 20. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice, open the door and I will come in to sup with him. Remember we talked about having a relationship with our sisters and brothers. The only one that can make that relationship right is Yeshua.